What's up everybody, Gromouse back at you, and I'm here with a DIY video, but not a lighting DIY video. I'm watching the GrowTube Roundtable, and I'm looking at this guy with a weird green head on, and I'm looking at all this stuff behind him, and I'm thinking, what's the point of collecting all that stuff if you're not going to use it? Unless, of course, you're trying to be the first ever grow room edition of Hoarders or something like that. So I figured I'd put something to use. And there was something one of my co-panelists said named Fragroli, And you should definitely check out his channel. And here's what he was saying. And taking an anecdote from uh, Mazinger when he was working out in the, you know, the giant massive dispensaries and grows out in Colorado. They hired, they ran Flood and Drain, but they hired someone to their entire job was to go in and pH every single reservoir every day. Like that was their entire job because it's that important. So, um, I, but you're right. I, well, I'd agree. I mean, pH is pretty important in a hydroponic reservoir, but I typically have grown in cocoa in the past and I inoculate with beneficials. So my thought process on pH and cocoa was like, get it in the ballpark and let the bacteria and fungi figure it out, you know, creating somewhat of a living medium. But until recently, you know, I wasn't running a reservoir, and now I am. And in my own reservoir, it's a 20 gallon res for about a four by fours worth of plants, about nine plants, and I am experiencing some drift. So I thought it would be cool to create a system that would monitor and adjust your pH automatically. So that's what we're gonna do. So here's what I'm gonna use on the build, and most of the stuff you can get from Amazon I'm going to be using two AC to 12 volt DC transformers, or you could use two wall warts if you have something sitting around. Um, I'm going to be using two peristaltic pumps from Amazon, as well as a project box from Amazon. And I'm going to be using an American Marine pinpoint pH controller. Now this is about a $200 controller that I had from a saltwater aquarium from many years ago. But there are other products on the market, as long as it's a pH controller, uh, it will work. Whether you want to do a single stage or a dual stage like I'm doing here. So the first step for the project is getting these peristaltic pumps mounted into this project box. The project box I'm using is eight inches wide uh, by six inches by about two and a half inches deep. And you can see it has some little holes in the bottom of it for mounting components, which I found to be pretty cool. So I'm gonna be using a piece of plexiglass here. You could use a piece of plywood or something else to mount it to, or nothing. I just felt, I felt like mounting it to something would be a little bit cleaner uh, for wire management, etc. So for mounting the peristaltic pumps, I'm going to go into the top of the project box by just drilling a couple holes. So using a precision caliper here, I'm just measuring out because I just like when I finish a project for everything to turn out nice and straight and, and look like it was cut by a computer or something. So I go to greater lengths to make sure everything's nice and straight. But what I found out is that with these peristaltic pumps, about an inch and an eighth is about the size hole you need to drill. So I'm using a step bit here, and you can buy these from Harbor Freight. You can get them in a three pack. Uh, they're about 20 bucks for a three pack, but I find them to be indispensable. And I'm marking here uh, as a depth guide so I don't go too deep and make the hole too large. So with the proper size holes drilled, um, I like to keep a file around uh, just to file the, uh, the plastic and uh, you know, I like it to be nice and tight. So I drilled a little smaller than an inch and an eighth, inch and an eighth, and I went ahead and just used a file here just to clean up the edges and make sure that the peristaltic uh, pumps were gonna fit perfectly, and they do. Now it's time to get into some wiring, but if you wanna do this project a little more simply and possibly a little more budget friendly, all you would do is simply attach some wire to the back of the peristaltic pump. It's marked for positive and negative. And on the other side of that wire, you would attach what's called a female DC barrel connector. And that's what allows you to plug directly into these wall warts that you probably have laying all around your house if you're anything like me. That will plug directly into the pH controller. This one I mentioned is a two stage, so it'll do pH up or down. Uh, but if you're just going one direction, you know, that'll, that'll do you. One peristaltic pump, one wall wart, and you plug it right into the controller. Now, wiring shouldn't be that big of a deal for you guys, but there's a lot of ways to do it. You could do a, a butt connector and crimp it. This is what's called a Wago connector. It's called a Wago, W-A-G-O. 221, I'll leave a link to that. And it's just a tools free wire connection. And it's, it's very strong, very strong. Or you could just use a good old fashioned wire nut, whatever you're comfortable with, just to attach a couple wires together. Or you could solder, which is what I'm gonna do here. But before I actually get into wiring it, I got a couple more holes to drill. I'm gonna drill two more holes for what's called a PG7 gland connector. And this is a, basically like a bulkhead for wires. It allows you to run a wire through metal or plastic or wood 
and uh, it's, it's a waterproof connector basically. It's like a, a cord grip. So I install a couple PG7 gland connectors in here, tighten them all down, and I'm just using two power cords from a couple burnt out pumps. One's a burnt out heater and one's a burnt out pump. The cords are fine, but um, the other alternative is run down to the hardware store and get some plug-ins and put it on a basic lamp plug-ins will work as well. So just running these through the gland connectors, figure out how much slack I need, and we're ready to start wiring. One little annoying thing is that this pH controller doesn't have any mounting holes or slots, so I, I just opened the back case to see where a good safe spot was to dil drill through, and it looked like the rubber feet was a safe spot that wouldn't hit any of the circuitry, so I just drilled it through the back so it was secure. Now I'm just stripping these lamp cords, and there's usually a black, which is hot, and a white, which is neutral. Um, the two power supplies are Meanwell APV1212. It's 12 volts, one amp DC supply. So they have a brown and a blue wire. The black hot wire from your lamp cord goes to brown and neutral or white goes to blue. So you just connect one cord up to each of the APVs, which powers each of the peristaltic pumps, one for pH up and one for pH down. The black and red leads coming out of the supply, really simple. It's just DC positive and DC negative. The peristaltic pump has a little red ink dot on the back, so you just put red up to red and black up to the other side, and now you're powering these peristaltic pumps with the DC that's controlled by the pH controller. So you could wrap the wire around and maybe electrical tape it if you're scared of soldering. I don't mind it. I just add a little bit of flux and heat up the contacts and allow the solder to flow in. That way it's nice and secure and permanent. So these are a waterproof project box, so they have a little seal. So you just put the little seal in there and it's time to clean it up, stuff all the wiring in there, and then go ahead and put the four screws in. And you're pretty much done. Two plugs, two peristaltic pumps, and a pH controller that'll control up or down. So let's test it. So to test it, I've got a little two or three gallon fish tank with two or three gallons worth of water in it. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a dilution of uh, 10 milliliters of pH up and pH down to 100 milliliters of reverse osmosis water. This gives us a 10 to one dilution, knocks down on the strength of that pH up or down. And for this small volume of water, it should hopefully help me work this thing out. Now the settings on the front of this pH, pH controller are very easy and very intuitive. All you do is set your desired pH. So if that is 6.0, you set that, and then you set the hysteresis, or the amount of change on either side of the 6.0. So I'll set it to 0.1. So the pH can go up to 6.1 until it initiates the pH down peristaltic pump, or it can go down to 5.9, and then it'll start adding pH up. So go ahead and try that. First time out of the gate, epic, epic failure. A 10 to one dilution, is way too strong, way too much change. So take two, 50, one, 50 to one dilution, 500 milliliters or half a liter of water to 10 milliliters of pH up or pH down. And this worked much better, but I was still getting a lot of yo-yoing. And it's, it, this is a sped up 10 times. So what you'll see in the background is that the pH up is getting utilized faster than the pH down. And this is because of the molarity of the solution. The pH up is weaker than the pH down. Now that could either be because general hydroponics made the pH down stronger for some reason, or it could be because when I used my pH up and down over the last six months, because these bottles are old, I didn't shake it properly. And when you don't shake any nutrient bottle properly, the strong stuff settles at the bottom and the weak stuff is up at the top where you're pouring. So you pour out a bunch of weak water and you end up with a really strong solution left in the bottle. That's why we shake the living hell out of all of our bottles. So I was able to fix that. I went up to a hundred to one dilution on my pH down and stayed with a 50 to one dilution on my pH up. And that seemed to do the trick. It sounds worse than it is. This whole process really only took me about 10 minutes to figure this out. And once I did, I can write that on my bottles. And this should hold true for as long as I have these particular pH up and down bottles, using the 50 to one dilution for one and 100 to one dilution for the other. The other thing I determined was that having the pH probe on the other side, which is intuitively what I thought would be better, uh, actually isn't quite as good. You probably wanna have your pH 
probe closer to where the pH up and down solutions are coming out of because that way the probe registers the change a little faster and will will kill the power to the peristaltic pump a little faster. So this worked really well for me. I've been running it now for a couple hours as I'm editing this video. And once it got stable, I'm looking at it. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. It's stable at 6.1 and the peristaltic pumps that you can, you can hear them coming on and off, they haven't turned on in about an hour. So this system works. This is solid. And for me, it's a solution that allows me to take some, some stuff that I had kind of laying around uh, and put it to use. Now, I know that the pinpoint controller is probably going to be the bottleneck for your, a lot of you guys financially. But if you can get something similar or even just a timer, you can pull off a project just like this. What's up, guys? Grimmouse here. And it's been about five hours since I finished this project and it's been going on testing. It is rock solid at 6.11 on the pH and this thing hasn't turned on in about three hours so it's solid. It's working. I feel confident in it and it's time to move it up to the room for some long-term testing. So in a bigger volume reservoir I expect it will run even better than it is in the small testing res and uh, I'm stoked. So. So if you like this kind of project, go ahead and like the video. And if you want to see more stuff like this, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.